Hey folks, Will Brink here at www.brinkzone.com. Uh, today we're going to cover briefly the topic of flax oil versus fish oil. Uh, this is an area of quite a bit of confusion for a lot of people, and understandably so. It actually can be a fairly complicated topic uh, if you're not uh, familiar with um, this area of biology or chemistry or whatever you want to call it. Um, basically, the difference between flax oil and fish oil is that the omega-3 in fish would be considered the active lipid uh, or the biologically active lipid. The omega-3 in flax has to convert to the fish oils and we just call them fish oils but they're actually short for EPA and DHA and if you go look up what that means you'll see it's uh, uh, hard to pronounce words to say the least. I could and I'm not going to bother. But the issue with flax oil is there is omega-3 in flax, there's omega-3 in fish. And people say, well, they, they both contain omega-3, so what, what's the difference? Well, the difference is they're not the same omega-3. The omega-3 in flax has to be converted in the human body to the fish oils to be active, to be what would be considered the active lipids. And that conversion can be fairly poor, uh, and it depends on age, it depends on, even on sex, it depends on um, diet, drugs, a, a whole bunch of things can uh, affect how much of the fat, the omega-3 in flax, converts in the human body to EPA and DHA. And so that's where it starts to get sort of fuzzy. Um, now back in the day, uh, when I introduced flax oil to the bodybuilding and fitness community, I was the first person to write articles about flax. And uh, in fact, my first article got rejected by Muscle Media because uh, I was told that I was crazy for pushing fats um, for fat loss and health and that type of thing. But they came around. But regardless, uh, you know, back in the day, one of the problems was that the fish oil quality was terrible. Uh, fish oils routinely were tested and had uh, mercury and PCBs uh, and rancid oils and stuff in them. And so I would not recommend them back in the day. This was years ago. And I was a much bigger fan of flax for that reason uh, alone. But the quality of fish oils has improved dramatically. Uh, and most of your uh, fish oils today are uh, actually pretty good and, and rarely, it's actually a rarity to find any of your major brand of fish oils uh, that would have, be found to have a mercury and PCBs and stuff. So uh, I do give some specific name brands that I recommend and doses on the Brink Zone and uh, that's linked underneath the video usually or you can go to the Brink Zone. I'm still a fan of flax, I still use flax, it doesn't mean you can't use both because you can if you want and I do routinely. Uh, and that's how to use both in a diet is given in uh, my diet books, my ebooks and such, and you can find that information if you're interested. So that's the, the lowdown, the basic lowdown on the difference between flax and fish. Flax has LNA, linoleic acid, which has to be converted in the human body to the fish oils, EPA and DHA, and that conversion can be fairly low. How low that is depends on which study you're looking at, which population, but it's fairly low. So. These days I opt to tell people to basically take fish oils and some additional flax if they want. But by taking fish oils you can take a much smaller amount and that gives you much uh, more leeway in your diet for more fats from other sources such as fish, such as olive oil, such as what have you, what have you. And for that you need to look at my other articles. And I hope you uh, find this information useful. If you do, please uh, hit the like buttons below and Twitter this and such. And I hope to see you all on the Brink Zone. And for more information on fat and fish, flax, and what have you, head on over to www.brinkzone.com where you'll find my blog, more videos, free reports on fat loss, muscle building, supplementation, fitness, health and longevity, as well as a ton of my articles and free weekly newsletter. And I hope to see you all on the Brink Zone.